Alright, this is scuffed video number two. Yo, why is there so little space on my phone? What is this? Um, this is scuffed video number three in the scuffed video series where I talk about whatever I can while I'm on vacation. So, I'm going to be talking about Rush Hour. Oh, by the way, how's it going, everybody? My name is Infamous Isaac. I'm going to be talking about Rush Hour 2. If this is your introduction to my channel, I am so sorry. Please forgive me. Go back further than like three days from when this was uploaded, and you'll see something way better than this. Or, well, a little bit better. <laughs> I'm not going to say marginally because, shoot, some of these videos be kind of garbage. I'm not going to lie to you, but I try my best, you know. With what I have, I try my best. But today, I'm going to be talking about Rush Hour 2. The second movie in the Rush Hour trilogy with Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker. And this movie takes place in Hong Kong after the first one. Where, oh actually, spoilers, spoilers, I'm so sorry. Let me give you my rating first. This movie is a 7. This movie is a 7. At its best, it's an 8, reaching some of the peaks of the first one. But overall, I think it's worse than the, than the first one. Not by a lot. Not by a lot. I want to I give this movie credit. Not by a lot. But it's not better than the first one. In my opinion, it isn't. It does have things to make up for that, though. And I'm going to go into that when I get to the spoilers, but, you know, if you want to leave now, by all means, go ahead. But if not, then, you know, come along the ride, right? So, this movie, again, takes place in Hong Kong directly after the first movie, or almost directly after, where James, or excuse me, Carter and Lee go to Hong Kong after solving all that business going on in America. And now they have more business going on in here, because, like, four minutes into the movie, Lee gets a call from one of the people in the, in the agency that he works for, and they're like, yo... Ricky Tan, whatever, blah, 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 blah. And Ricky Tan is apparently the guy who killed his father. And so we're learning all this, blah, 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 blah. And Carter's over here like, come on, dog. I don't want to do this stuff. I want to be on vacation. Just have a good time. I already have this, I have enough to deal with in L.A. So they, they have some problems. But the problems majorly stem from the fact that Lee isn't being honest with Carter. He's not telling him the truth. They've gone through death-defying like uh, situations but he still doesn't want to be open with him, at least major, majorly open. So one one thing leads to another day. They go to a spa. They have a whole bamboo place, like, in the, in the street-type brawl with some people, a chase. And uh, actually, I'll talk about that later. But the after the massage place, they, they basically get fired, quote-unquote. They're off the case. Well, not fired, but, yeah, they're off the case. And Cardi's about to go back to L.A. Lee's over there, and then... He finally tells him, yo, like, this guy used to be, or Ricky Tan used to be my dad's partner. So, Carter's like, alright, bet, check this out, right, check me out. Oh, actually, I forgot to mention another thing. There was the the chase in the beginning, there's the massage parlor, and then there's the uh, the yacht. There's a yacht where we learn more about Ricky Tan. You know, he's supposedly dead, right? Because we saw him literally get shot by one of his subordinates. But, after that, they get taken off the case and... Lee tells him, like, yo, this guy was my dad's partner, and my dad is the reason, like, he, he's the reason why my dad is dead. So Carter is like, bad, right, check me out, I got, I got, I got some connects, bro, I got some connects. So he goes back to LA with, with Carter, and they go around getting some connects. One of them is a, a, a black Chinese man in, in LA with Chinese soul food in it, and that seems pretty fire. But basically, they go to a, a stakeout, they go to a, a hotel, and then across from them is a building where the people on the yacht was at, one of the one of the people that Carter was trying to riz up and all that. So they 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 stake it out, they go over there after they think that they see a bomb being given to her. We find out that she was actually a Secret Service agent and they get tasked with doing something, right? They get tasked with going to I actually I forgot what happened here. Actually no 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 I do remember. So they go to uh a Chinese spot, or not a Chinese spot, a place where a Chinese man works, and they're trying to find him, right? They're trying to find him so they can confront him. This leads to them getting ambushed, basically, and then the, the what was their face? The the Secret State Service agent was there, apparently double-crossing them, but it's, it's kind of confusing, which is actually one of my complaints. So, they, they, they get ambushed, and they get kidnapped, but luckily Carter and Lee escape, and now they go to the final place of confrontation in the movie the casino, the Red Dragon Casino, and this is where it goes down, bro, this is by far the best action set piece in the movie, besides, like, the massage place, but it was so fire, the Red Dragon Casino had some of the funniest lines in the movie, some of the best action, some of the best story, it was just overall great, I really liked the, the, the Red Dragon Casino, where Lee goes undercover, basically, to try to find what's going on, because, um, what was her face, the Secret Service agent, it's like, yo, 
blah, 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 riz, rizzing him up and all that. And then Carter, trying to help him out, is causing a distraction by going to one of the one of the tables and betting, basically. And that is where the comedy comes in, bro. Chris Tucker is one of the funniest men I've ever seen in the movie, bro. He's so funny. <laughs> He puts so much passion into being a black man. Like, and that sounds crazy. And shoot, I mean, I, I, I don't think I've ever showed you guys my skin. I'm dark skin, bro, so I understand why he's putting that much passion into it. I'm Hispanic, though, so don't, 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 I'm, I'm kind of like a, I'm kind of like half breed, but whatever. Oversharing. So, he, he's causing that distraction, and then Lee's having all his stuff going on. Lo and behold, blah 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 blah. Crazy action set piece. Firefight. And then, at the end of it, Ricky Tan dies because Lee kicks him out of a window, bro. Karate kicks him out of a window. Fire. Genuinely fire. Oh, and by the way, sorry about the background noise. Like, again, I, I, I said I'm on vacation. So, the fact that I'm recording this right now, probably shouldn't, but, you know, whatever. So, lo and behold, Ricky Tan is dead. They have a crazy action set piece at the end of it with a huge explosion, and Carter and Lee are alive. Isabel, or excuse me, the secret service agent at the end of the movie rises up Lee one more time, but he's over here like, nah, Doug, I'm better than that. And then Lee and Carter realize like, yo, we're not done yet. Let's go watch the next play in Madison Square Garden. <laughs> and mind you, this is 2001. I don't, I, I, I think the last time I went to a finals was with Patrick Ewan, bro. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't think the Knicks were good this year. <laughs> but that's the end of the movie. I had to sum it up really fast. But overall, you know, the comedy on point i can't even hold you the comedy was on point i would say that it's worse than the first movie's comedy but at the same time it's like not really because of the second half of the other movie that comedy was fire genuinely peak the first movie was just funny all around but some of the jokes that they had in the second movie were honestly some of the best and some of the worst were like oh some of them maybe didn't land i can't i couldn't tell you because i don't remember them but some of them were just like eh product of its time i remember I don't, I don't, I don't remember. Oh, it was, it was Lee. He was like talking to Carter while they were getting kidnapped, and he was like, "Yo, I'm gonna slap you." And then Lee is just like, "Bro, I'm gonna send you back to Africa." And they just start beefing with each other, bro. It was so funny, but comedy was on point. Music was, you know, fitting for for where they are, stuff like that. It it, it was inoffensive. Yeah, the action, action, always fire, always genuinely fire. The karate action that this movie has, so fire. I'll never underappreciate the action that these movies have hopefully the third one is just as good with the action and in the story you know the story could have been better i feel like the first half didn't have much story because we we didn't know much but i guess that was on purpose because like oh shoot you know we learn more about lee in the second half but isabel or excuse me well yeah isabel i think isabella isabel whatever her name is a secret service agent basically she was she i don't think she should have been in the movie she was kind of whack like her acting, you know, not, nothing is the actor. Her actor did fine. It's just the character served no purpose except leading Lee and Carter on and just holding them by a string, basically guiding them to the next point in the story. It's like, she was so whack. She didn't really have much of a character except, hey, I'm hot and I'm going to try to riz you up so you, you can help out the Secret Service, but without being a burden to the Secret Service. It's like, come on, dog. These, these two... Uh, J James Carter and Lee are some of the sauciest agents you will ever have in your in your organization. These two have stopped two, well, not world ending, but crazy threats in the United States and Hong Kong. These guys are sauce. What are you talking about? I don't get it. But you know, at the same time, they are threats. At the, like they 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 do leave some crazy chaos in their wake. I'm not gonna lie. But I don't know. I I didn't like it that much. But Overall, I mean, story was fine besides that. Getting Lee back story was really cool because we got so much of Carter's in the first one. And it just makes me wonder, like, what's going to happen in the third movie? I, I, I genuinely wonder what they're going to do. But overall, you know, this movie was a 7. At its best, it was an 8. At its worst, it was like a 6, maybe, around there. So I'd say it's worse than the first movie, but it's not bad. It's not, it's not a bad movie at all. I'd say it's a, it's a decent sequel. Not the best sequel, but a decent sequel overall. And it just makes you wonder, again, like, how is this going to happen in the third movie? Because it's six years later. So what are they going to do? I don't know. But I'm excited. I'm, I'm generally excited to see how the third movie ends and how I'm going to feel about it. Hopefully it isn't too much of a, of a departure from the first and second movie. Because although the second movie was kind of like, oh, I didn't like it as much, I still felt like, oh, yeah, this has the same spirit as the first movie. So hopefully the third movie 
keeps in line with those two. But thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoy. I'm going to end it here for now. And I'll see you all whenever I get a chance to record again. This has been Infamous Isaac, and I'll check you all in the next video. Peace.